The much-anticipated Consumer Electronics Show opens this morning in Las Vegas. Over four days, tens of thousands of visitors will see the newest, flashiest, and most cutting-edge products. Hot items include drones, self-driving cars, virtual reality headsets, robots, and a whole lot more. This year marks the show's 50th anniversary. More than 165,000 people are expected to attend. They will view gadgets from nearly 4,000 companies. Brian Cooley, lucky you, editor-at-large with our partners at CNET, is on the convention floor in Las Vegas. Brian, good morning to you. I hear this is a place to be if you're tech-minded or you just like all the newest, hottest gadgets. What do you like? Oh, you know, it, it, it's always bewildering, Gail. You know, one of the things I think is most interesting here is we've talked before last year about virtual reality and augmented reality, glasses and goggles, and, and people are getting a decent handle on that. What's coming up now is I think what's called mixed reality, and there are different definitions. One example is this phone from Lenovo called the Fab Pro 2. You see a camera here. They all have cameras. But this one now also has a depth sensor, the first phone to have that, which means as you look at it, the world, you can see the world through it, but mm. also use this sensor to create and overlay objects. You might go furniture shopping virtually, if you will. So it's borrowing from both the virtual and augmented worlds. It's easier to see, obviously, than to describe, but mm -hmm. this is a first. And then if you really want to go high horsepower, Microsoft's HoloLens, which has been around for a while, but it's also part of this mixed reality trend where you can, again, be aware of the world around you. You're not putting on goggles that block your vision, but then bring things in that are either objects or even people or avatars that are in the world around you, not just following your vision. Again, easier to see than to describe, mm -hmm. but this is the new mixed reality term. That's kind of the new buzzword yeah. in these realities, as they say. And what mixed about reality. smart cars? What are you seeing with trends with smart cars? Every car maker here is talking about autonomous and connected. Now, they can be related or they can be separate. One is about self-driving. That's autonomy. The connected part tends to be about entertainment and services right now. But I think what's really interesting here is that we're starting to see vehicles that are getting to the market, and they're going there in a way where they can say, we're going to be safe enough, and we can start to prove it. The other interesting thing is connecting from cars to homes. Uh, Ford, for example, is now on the market with Amazon Alexa technology. Oh. So you can control your home from a Ford car or control your car from the home. You can go both ways with voice. And that Amazon tech that you know a lot of people know about these days mm -hmm. is oh what gosh. ties them together. Yep. It's the glue. That's cool. What about things like, go ahead. Go ahead. No, uh, uh, television. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Brian. Uh, TVs, oh, it, they, they only get bigger. Yeah, right. <laughs> and Good. the other thing we're seeing is now they're, now they're getting thinner, though, which is a nice trend from just getting bigger. Samsung, LG, both rolled out televisions that have become incredibly thin, down to a tenth of an inch. These are pricey ones. But speaking of vision technologies, there's oh. one I've got right here that is a drone. It's called the Hover Cam. It's got a camera that can see me, but not just see me, it knows my face. Therefore, uh -huh. by visual recognition, it can follow me and take videos of my life and take stills. It's kind of the ultimate selfie cam because our arms are only so long, right? But I'd like yeah. to have a camera further away that is watching and gathering clips of my life with my family, what have you. This guy will be coming out later this year, or he's out already, I should say, $600 for a kit. Uh, but it's very cool computer vision technology wrapped up in a drone as well. And alongside that, if you want to kind of be a similar area, is take a look at robotics. Uh, I've got one here next to me that is not just robotic, but looks like a little humanoid. And this is called Curie. It's from a company called Mayfield Robotics. And look how charming it is. This charming. is the big trend around robotics this year, is they actually are talking about what kind of a relationship will you have with a robot in your home so that you actually like it and don't just Hopefully get benefit from yeah. it. It's not just about function. I don't, I don't so know if I want a relationship, it, a Brian. Brian, I don't know about a relationship <laughs> with a robot, but you, there was something that caught my eye about a smart hairbrush. What in the world is a smart hairbrush? Yeah. Uh, Kerastas, you know, well-known hair products brand, and Withings, a French smart uh, connected products company, have this brush that, uh, that right in the middle there's a microphone. Yeah. And as you brush your hair, and it doesn't do me a whole lot of good, but as you <laughs> brush your hair, it can hear hair breakage, and it's got accelerometers in it, kind of like your smartphone, that can tell if you're brushing too hard or if the way you're using it is wrong. Of course, there's an app, and that will tell you, you know what? You told us you've got problems with breakage, or your hair's frizzy, or it's not straight enough. We can tell how you're using it, and by the sound, if you're breaking or damaging your hair, and prompt you to use different products, and to change the way you move the brush. Oh, so it is a smart hairbrush in a very serious sense. A couple hundred bucks. 
Mm. All right, that's a whole new world. You can go to CVS and get one for $5.99 and just brush gently. Thank you very much, Brian Cooley. Very cool Thanks, stuff guys. you've got. Thanks a lot.